Is your team not performing well? Is morale low and turnover high? Are you falling further behind the competition? I'm here to help. I'm your host, Shaney, and this is The Leadership Show, where business strategy and culture finally meet, and we make the long-awaited shift from rhetoric to results. I promise I'm not your typical boring leadership consultant, and I will help you get your shift together. Let's do this. Welcome, leader shifters, to The Leadership Show. I'm your host, Shady, as you know. And today, I am thrilled to welcome onto the show, Daniel Alonzo. Say hello, Daniel. Hello, hello. <laughs> so, leader shifters, Daniel has a super interesting story. College athlete, injury, had to come up through that adversity and, and figure out what he was going to do with his life. And boy, has he done that. I'll let him tell the story about how he has grown an extremely robust financial services business and what he's up to now as a coach and a, a soon to be author. And Daniel joins us from Rancho Cucamonga, California. So we've got a bi-coastal show today because I'm in New York, folks. So let's do this, Daniel. Thank you for joining us. Well, thank you for having me. I'm, I'm excited, Chaney. I mean, you know, this is a, a, an honor to be on with you. Obviously, you've done some amazing things in your life, and you've been such a, a, an inspiration to so many people. And so uh, I'm glad that, 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 you, uh, that you asked me to, to be on today. Yeah, thank you. So looking forward to hearing all the jewels of wisdom that you can share with the leader shifters because, you know, from everything I've learned about you as I've gotten to know you, I think there are lots of great examples that we can share. But let's rewind to kind of the beginning. You, you, you grew up where and, and, be, and, and were a, a baseball guy where? Let's, let's talk about all that. Well, so I, so Shaney, I, I was, um, I grew up in a not so good neighborhood in California. Okay. Uh, I didn't grow up with well, you know, from a wealthy family or, you know, a wealthy upbringing or anything like that. We're an average and ordinary family. And, uh, you know, but, but my life growing up, I mean, from five years old, I had a baseball bat in my hand. And so I was always, um, wanting to play and to, to compete and to throw a ball. And yeah. so my whole life, I mean, that's all I thought about. I thought about playing baseball every single day of my life up until, you know, until my injury. And so it, it was one of those things where I, I think I, I was raised in an environment of a, a competitive environment sure. and that helped me later on come to find out it helped me to be a better coach. It helped me to be a better leader and, uh, and, and it's just been, it's been an incredible ride so far. Absolutely. I love hiring former athletes. And, and when I was at Goldman, not that we exclusively hired former athletes, but I would say they always had a leg up athletes and folks from the military because they were team players. They, they knew what it meant to be great at what they did and to bring it to a team context for, for the greater good. Now, what position did you play in baseball? Got to know that. Uh, well, I started off as a catcher. I mean, okay. of course, as a young kid, you're pitcher and catcher, right, and then yeah. and then I and then I ended up uh, kind of settling at second base or third base. That was okay. those were my main spots. Nice key positions on the field. All right, so let's let's fast forward to the point at which you you suffered an injury. So tell us about the injury and where you found yourself and your headspace at that point. So what's funny is that I actually didn't get hurt in baseball. Ah. I got hurt in basketball. So <laughs> I was, so I, I mean, I, I was not the, the high school valedictorian. Okay. So I, I'm not the smartest guy. I'm not the, you know, I was, I was not, I didn't have the highest GPA. So of course, when I went to go play baseball and I decided to pick out all my classes, one of my classes was the officiating basketball class. So that was my easy, you know, ceramics and art. And, you know, those were my underwater uh, basket weaving, right? Underwater <laughs> basket weaving was my favorite. And so, <laughs> so of course, in officiating basketball class, I don't think they taught us anything about officiating basketball. It was pretty much just an open hour to go play basketball. So we were playing and I went up for a layup, came back down, slammed my knee real bad. And uh, it was just crunch. And uh, I finished out the season. I wrapped it finished out the season. We, we only had maybe three or four games left and I finished it out and 
I was done and I was back at home. I felt like a loser. I was hanging out with the wrong people. I, I, I mean, it was, it was devastating for me because sure. competition is what I always loved. And being a part of a team, being a part of a family, being a part of a, a group of, of, of men and women, while well, men when it was baseball, but being a part of a group was always so important to me. And so I lost that. And, uh, and I came back home and I was, I was lost. I yeah. was lost. Okay. Well, you obviously picked yourself up and dusted yourself off. <laughs> Talk yes. about, let's, let's hear about your transition into financial services and how you built that business into an extremely lucrative, dare I say, empire. <laughs> right, right. No, it, I mean, really, I mean, they, these, uh, I mean, I, I was sitting there doing nothing. I was working little jobs. I was making seven bucks an hour. Oh. Uh, th th this guy, this guy, uh, you know, that I grew up with, he comes and talks to me and he t starts telling me, hey, look, you need to check out this financial services company. They're looking for great people right now. And of course I said, no. Uh, it's probably a scam. It's probably not real. They're saying you can make all this money. It's probably bullshit or whatever. Yeah. And so I, so after four months, I mean, he would not shut up about it. Mm. And after four months, I'm like, all right, I'll go with you. Cause he's a friend of mine. I'm, I'll go with you. I'll go check it out. I went and checked it out. I sat in the front row and I just remember looking up at this guy. He was about six foot four white guy. Looked nothing like me. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a short uneducated little Mexican kid. Okay. That's you know, <laughs> what I am. Okay. Self-described. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was wearing a baseball hat. I was wearing a white t-shirt jeans and work those yellow work boots, like Belle Biv DeVoe. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, I'm talking. Yeah. About, yeah. Like you're a lineman for an electricity company kind of boots. That's what I was. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And so I, so I go, uh, so I sit in this meeting and this guy looks right at me and I couldn't relate to him really because he looked nothing like me. And he was actually very, he sounded like a really smart guy. And, and I was very intimidated. I was, I've been always, I've always been intimid intimidated by tall white men. Okay. Because they just scared me. They looked okay. educated. They looked like they knew more than me. And, and so, so I'm sitting in this room and I'm looking up at him and I'm just thinking, there's no way this has got to be bullshit. I mean, there's no way that this can be real. He's telling me, he's like, you could make a hundred thousand a year. I mean, this was back in 1995 or something. He's like, you could make a hundred thousand dollars a year. Well, that sounded could, like a fortune to you back then, right? Oh my God. I was, I was yeah. making 14,000 a year. That was the most I ever made in my life was 14,000. And so he looks right at me and he says, you can, you could make a hundred thousand. He said, you could travel the world. You could have freedom and choices and options. Like the infomercial guy on the, yeah. like two o'clock in the morning. You know what right, I mean? Right, right, That's right. what he sounded like. That's yeah. what he and you know what? I looked at him and I said, he puts on, I bet you he puts on his pants every day. Like I put on my pants. Yeah. And so there was something inside of my gut that looked at this guy. And I said, if this guy can do it. I can do it. Yeah. And it was just, that was the shift for me. That was my mind shift where I said, you know what? Fuck it. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I got nothing to lose everything to gain. Like if I don't try, I'll never know. And like, literally like what I was doing that day was probably not good things. You know, I was probably smoking something or drinking something <laughs> that I wasn't supposed to be doing. Yeah. And, and I'm thinking I'm wasting my life away. Really? As a, I was, I felt like a loser. I was, and I always felt guilty because I felt like my life was supposed to end up doing more, you know? Yeah. yeah. And so I said, yes. And then that's, that's what started it all. I love it. So essentially you woke up to the fact that yeah, maybe he was tall and white and more educated and wealthier than you at that time. But he, he wakes up and puts on his pants one leg at a time like anybody else does. He's, he's human. And, and I got to tell you, that is a really important realization. And I wish more people would look at other human beings as the equals that we all are. Like the status is, is bullshit. And that's just like a, a temporary thing and it's a definition it, it, it's it's a label like or there are a series of labels that that we put on each other and then we wear the masks but underneath it all you know not to be like all oh, berkeley about it or anything but we're, we're 
we're all just human fucking beings. And I, 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 I coach a lot of executives and at, even at, at, in the C-suite, a lot of them, they're lonely because people are afraid of them. They're intimidated. And, and so they don't have a lot of really connected relationships for that reason. And so I try and encourage people to like, you know, they're no different than us. So love that. Thank you. All right. So you said yes, you signed on, you started building your business. Tell us about the tenacity with which you approached it and how you built it. Well, I got after it. I mean, uh, there's no two ways about it. I mean, I was the fast start award winner in the office in the organization. I mean, I, I mean, I did everything. I mean, cause, because I came from sports, I yeah. was very coachable. I yep. did what they told me to do. I mean, it, it, it's mind boggling to me, uh, Shaney, that there's so many people that are failing in life because their egos are so fucking big. You know what I mean? It's like yes. their egos are so gigantic. I mean, I, I tell people all the time, I mean, your ego is going to keep you broke. Yeah. And, and so luckily I was a, you know, a, 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 a maybe not the smartest person, but I was smart enough to listen to the smartest person. So these people were telling me, do this step number one, do this step number two, do this step number three, do this step number four. I mean, it's, it's, it's interesting because I was so coachable that I remember yeah. uh, because, you know, I had to go on these training appointments so I can learn the business, you know, mm -hmm. and you didn't really get paid on the training appointments. It was almost like you were an intern in the beginning. And so they, I was just going out with this guy and taking him to my market, my warm market. And I was so coachable that I'm like, like a month later, I, I, I told the guy, I'm like, so when do I start getting paid? Like, when do I start making money? He's like, dude, you can't start making money until you're licensed with the state. And I'm like, what the, you know? Yeah. And so I immediately, I took off the entire week at my job and I went to uh, the classes and I got the classes knocked out and, uh, and then I got licensed with the state. And so I, but I was that person that was so gullible. So just uh, like a piece of clay, just mold me. I'll do whatever you tell me to do. And I'm telling you, I, I, it changed my life because, because I was that way. What happened is I got off such, to such a great fast start mm -hmm. that I gained this momentum, this, this, you know, flywheel momentum that never stopped. I mean, literally 20 years I've been doing this and it has been a constant momentum machine. My income has gone up almost other than the downturn of the, the mortgage crisis. Yep. My income has gone. I've been through the worst stock market crisis in 2000, you know, and, and then the worst uh, mortgage crisis. Yep. My income has gone up pretty much every year for 20 plus years. Yeah. Well, that's what you have to do when you're in an eat what you kill role. Financial Absolutely. services, commercial real estate. There's a lot of great careers out there where if, if, you don't, if you don't persist every day and, you know, law numbers, you just got to, like you said, get after it, then, then you will fail because no one's entitled to succeed, right? You, don't, you, you have to earn it. And it sounds like that's, that's what you were really good at, at doing. You, you didn't let your ego get in the way. I love it. Um, so one of the things I've, I've heard you say that I love, it's simple, it's sort of Nike-esque, is have a do it now mentality. Tell the leader shifters what that means to you and what it could mean to anyone who's looking to make a shift. So I, I believe that our brain is just a computer. I believe yep. that you can download information into your brain that will serve you. So, yep. so instead of us waking up, trying to figure out what to do, I wake up, I allow my brain to take over and my brain gets me to do the things that I sometimes don't feel like doing. Yeah. And so years and years ago, I, I decided to, to say these three words, which I think <laughs> are three most powerful words in the universe. Yeah. And it's called do it now. So, so I, I trained myself when I wasn't feeling like doing something. For example, I don't, get, I, want, I don't want to get out of bed. And I say, do it now, do it now, do it now. And then immediately I will, I literally, I will jump two feet out of my bed 
when I say that. Now, sometimes I'll be in bed and I'll, I'll say in my mind, I'm like, don't say it. Do not say, do it now. Like, hit the snooze button. Hit the snooze button. Do it now. Dude, exactly. He's like, don't say, do it now. And I will say that in my mind because I've trained myself so hardcore that I, when I say those words, if I don't feel like making a phone call, all I have to do is say, do it now. I will do it immediately. If I don't feel like talking to that prospect, I will say, do it now. I will go and do it. I mean, that's how crazy I am about those three words. Because if, if, you, if, you, if you try to do this and then you lie to yourself down the road, you're screwed. It doesn't work. It, it's not going to work anymore. So you have to train your brain to do the things that you don't feel like doing. And by the way, that, that's the reason why most people fail. I mean, come on. Most people are smart enough, know the information. They just don't take action. That's it. That's all absolutely. it is. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. One, one of my uh, role models in, in the corporate leadership development arena is a guy named Alan Fine. And it's one of the things he says all the time that I quote him on, which is, it's not that people don't know what to do. It's that they don't do what they know. 100%. So, right. so That's do it. it now is a bit of a rallying cry in your own head to, to just act before you get in your own fucking way and talk yourself yeah. out of it. <laughs> Either because, you, either because you lack confidence or that dreadful ego shows back up and says, oh, no, I can't look, risk looking bad or not showing right. up perfectly or whatever. Yeah. So. Got it. Okay. So what do you say to people who listen to this and hear another, you know, American dream kind of story, you know, which I, I would say yours is, and, and say, yeah whatever. That's like needle in a haystack. It's pie in the sky. Ain't going to happen for me. And, and yeah, he's all full of, of, of grins and shits and giggles, but not going to happen for me. What do you say to those people? Well, first of all, you're fucking negative. All right. That's, that's, that's first of all. All right? <laughs> yeah. That's number one. Okay. And, and I, I believe in the law of attraction. I know it sounds fairy tale-ish and some people don't buy into the secret and all that crap, but a lot of years ago, I started to train my thinking to think positive, you know? And so, so number one, if you're thinking that, get over it, get over yourself because mm -hmm. I am nobody special. I, I started in business knowing zero. I started mm -hmm. at zero. I had yeah. nothing. Matter of fact, I was in the negative because my girlfriend, which is now my wife, which I love her dearly, and she had a lot of debt. And she has an awesome name. Her name is Karma, right? Her name is Karma. Yeah, oh. her name is Karma, like good karma, bad yes. karma. Yes. She's good karma 99% of the time. She's good karma. Mm -hmm. So she had debt. So I, so I was in the negative. So we had nothing. I was living in my parents' uh, attic, basically, converted attic into a bedroom. Mm. And, uh, and that was it. I mean, that was my life. So, so for you to tell me that I'm lucky is really an insult you know like if somebody was to say you're lucky or oh that's you know pie in the sky or that's a needle in the haystack i mean to me that's not fair you know what what i can say is that if you hooked up with somebody like me and i took you under my wing and i taught you how to build a process and i taught you how to master your craft and i taught you how to uh, to duplicate a process mm -hmm. and then on top of that I taught you how to sell an inspiring vision for the future on what you can do and where you can go and how you can change your life let me tell you something you're gonna get some people to follow you yeah and if you get some people to follow you you're going to be successful I don't, I don't give a shit. I mean you know there's no possibility if you have those things that you can fail long range it ain't gonna happen Yep. I, I love that you brought up the law of attraction. I'm also a law of attraction. Oh my God. Advocate that that's not even a strong enough word. I'm going to an Abraham Hicks workshop this weekend in Connecticut. Oh, like, so you're, you are hardcore. Oh, hardcore. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it just makes sense. It's, it's no different than when we're driving a car and if you are not looking straight ahead at the lane you want to stay in, you're going to veer. Right. I mean, I, I ride motorcycles and and one of the 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 biggest rules of safe motorcycle riding is don't look at the shit on the side of the road unless you want your bike to end up dumped on the side of the road. Right. Right. So it's, so it's like, don't look at what you don't want. 
focus exactly. on what you do want. I mean, the analogies about law of attraction are all over the place if, yeah. we, if we choose to see them. And I couldn't agree more that it's about being positive. And that doesn't mean we, all, we always have to be like no. Pollyanna. It just means reprogram that operating system that is our brain that makes us a different kind of mammal than all the other animals in the world and shift the mindset from I can't to I can. And I have, uh, you know, I, I'm not good enough to, I, I'm, I, I can do it just like anybody else can and just continue to build from there. So your, your story's really inspiring. I love it. I mean, I, I get up every day. I mean, you know, look, I, I look in the mirror every day. I, I get in the shower. I look in, I have a mirror in my shower. Yes, yes. And, and I say great things always happen to me. Great things always happen to me. And I say that, you know, maybe three or four or five times. And it's amazing to me how lots of great things keep happening to me. Yes. Yet I know so many people that their life is shit. They're always complaining. They're always, you know, something's wrong. They always got drama. They always got shit. And, 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 and that's why. It's because, yeah. and, and I believe, look, whatever you focus on with, with energy, with determination, with purpose, with courage, with, you know, with, with passion yep. is ultimately going to be your reality. I mean, I'm looking at a sign right now. It says, whatever you focus on grows, whatever you think about is going to grow and manifest in your life. I believe that shit. Like in my core, I believe it. Yep. And that is, I think, and, and again, I still get tickets. I still have accidents. I still, you know, stuff goes bad in my life. Sometimes it's not a perfect life. Of course. We still get the flu. We still, exactly. right. There's still, yeah. we still have airplane delays, right? It still exactly. happens. Exactly. But it, but it's funny. It, it's funny, Shane, that it just happens a little bit less. Yeah. Then I see my counterparts that are, that I notice are negative. They wear the, all their negativity on their shoulders all the time. And they're always, you know, lean, you know, leaning over. I believe your physiology is such an important thing in your life. I mean, the way you move, the, the way you, you know, your tonality of your voice, the way that you attract people in your life, it, it, it's powerful. And it's something that people got to really pay attention to if they're going to take their life to that next level. I agree. And I would even go so far as to recommend leader shifters that if you have people in your life who are just chronically negative and, and, and just unpleasant to be around, excise them from your life like a Gone. cancerous tumor. Because we are the sum total of the five, six, seven, eight people we surround ourselves with most surround us we need to surround ourselves with people who lift us up who fill us with energy who don't drain us and bring us down uh and then the other thing i wanted to mention a little shout out to my friend sarah along these lines of you that you go in the shower every day and say great things are always happening to me she recently published a book called the universe fucking loves me <laughs> oh i love that i love that and it's i will read that all book. about that all about that yeah very cool very cool Awesome. So speaking of books, you are a budding author yourself. Tell us about the book that you have in the works. So it is called Wealth on the Beach. So we're right in kind of the middle of everything. We, we wrote the book proposal. And so we got it out there to some publishers. And so we're going to see what's going to happen with it. But uh, it should be out. We're on schedule right now to have it out uh, probably middle next year. Uh, but it's called Wealth on the Beach. And Wealth on the Beach really means it's kind of like, it, it's the way that people can describe what it is that they truly want in their life. For example, you know, what is your wealth on the beach? When I say, what is your wealth on the beach? That, that means like, what's your goal? What do you want in your life? Right. What, it's what, an what, analogy. You know, yeah. It's an analogy. It, it doesn't mean that you love the beach and that, you know, you could like the mountains, you know, that's right. your wealth on the beach. So right. it's kind of me, uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's a book about me teaching you how to get financially independent so that you can get your wealth on the beach. But I, I do it a little bit differently. I, like I, I'm not talking about getting financial independent just by saving and investing your money. I'm talking about building a business in whatever business that you're in, right. but building a business that can create massive passive income. Because I think that, look, if you're an employee, you have no leverage. You're, you're, you're one person. So 
every time you make a sale, that's it. You got to go make another sale and you got to make another sale and you got to make another sale. And, and to me, it's maddening and you're never going to get your true wealth on the beach, whether that be freedom and choices and options. If you're stuck, yeah. right? like, like cemented to a job. And so, so I started at 21 by 24. I had a, a business that was worth a million dollars. Uh, and then by 28, I had actually saved a million dollars, like in cash. But the reason why I mentioned that is because that's not even the best part. The best part is I had cash flow of $500,000 at that time. I had cash flow of a half a million dollars a year without getting out of bed. It was passive income. So I had built a business through, like I had kind of mentioned a little bit earlier, through building a process. And this is what the book really is is guiding people through uh, the adventure of building a process of duplicating that process with other people. Cause right. you're, you're never going to get free. If you don't have people working with you, you got to have a team of people working. I, I was just at Grant Cardone's office last week and, uh, and we spent a little bit of time with their, their office and with them. And, uh, and, and I got to look at all of his, salespeople in his office. I mean, the office was just jam packed with people, you know, mm -hmm. and, and you just go, that's why the guy makes probably five to $10 million a month yeah. is because, right. I mean, is because he has a team of people. Yeah. So I, I teach people how to, in their own businesses, whatever their business is, I teach them how to build a process, which is things like manuals, DVDs, CDs, online courses, YouTube videos, all that stuff. And then I teach people how to duplicate it by creating the behaviors, by building leaders, by getting people mentally tough, by teaching people about the law of attraction, things like that. And then, of course, selling a vision to those people so they can see themselves. Because ultimately, people will work harder for themselves than they will work for you. So yeah. the corporate America model with all these millennials is going to shit right now. Oh, Believe totally not want to be told what to do. Yeah, I, I forget the exact statistic, but it's something along the lines of by 2025, half the workforce are going to be entrepreneurs, self-employed, contract workers, gig economy, you know, that whole type of thing. So absolutely. Well, you know, I'm, I'm with you. I got myself out of the cement of, of corporate America a while ago myself. And uh, wealth on the beach, I guess, for me is, you know, wealth on a powder day uh, at, at a great ski resort. <laughs> Love that. Love that. I'm, I'm going, later on in the year, I'm going to Utah, and I have a couple of friends that they're like, hey, man, if you come and you get on that first, second day, man, it's going to be powder. It's going to be incredible. So, yes. That's yeah. Uh, awesome. and, and, like, from your mouth to God's ears that we have a great powder season because Utah and Colorado, the Rockies last year, just had a shitty ski season. So, this year we need some serious snow because I'm okay. going to get slopes with vengeance. But anyway, thank you so Love much for, for joining us today. This has been a blast to hear your story and learn a little bit more about how you got where you are and, of course, the book. And just to, to recap, Leader Shifters, there's a lot of really synergistic points that Daniel made today in terms of leader shifting. One of the first things that he said that – as you could hear before that I really loved was like, just look at other people as human beings, right? Nobody's special. It's all just smoke and mirrors, right? So get, get over yourself and start to just relate to others as human. And that means get over your ego. Like people ask me all the time, what's the number one obstacle that you see leaders grappling with? And it's not competition. It's not the economy, right? It's not globalization or lack thereof. It's their fucking egos. It's the number one thing. Um, be coachable, right? You don't have to have played a college sport or, or any sport for that matter to, to be coachable, right? Learn from others and, and take some of those best practices and make them, their, make them your own and train your brain to be positive, right? We have a choice. We can go through life negative. We could go through life positive and in creation mode and create for ourselves, you know, wealth on the, or at the fill in the blank, whatever 
heaven on earth is for you, right? <laughs> That's it. That's it. That's it. <laughs> All right. So where, where can the leader shifters find you if they have additional questions or want to get updates on when the book comes out? All right. All right. Well, Hey, look, I mean, first of all, make sure that you follow me on Instagram. Okay. I, I, I answer just about every message personally. Okay. So, and I get a lot of them now. I mean, I'm starting to get a lot of messages every day. I love that. Okay. Number two, of course, Facebook, Twitter, all that good stuff. I have a YouTube channel we're working on. Uh, we also have alonzoacademy.com. Okay. So that is, and, and again, we're building that out to be the center place of all of our products, of all the things that we're doing, of all the updates, all the events and things like that. So, uh, you know, stay tuned, kind of, uh, you know, make sure you go and at least subscribe to that because the people that subscribe to that, we're going to be adding you to email lists that in the future you'll be getting updates on all the things we're doing, books and, you know, just even events all over the country. I speak all over the country. So if anybody ever out there needs me to come and speak in your town or, uh, I mean, I've spoken in front of 50,000 people at one time before. So uh, I've been, and again, I speak, uh, you know, regularly every single month all over the country. I was just out in uh, Mississippi and New Orleans and Miami. And so I, I go all over the place. I love helping people grow their life, not just in business, mm -hmm. but I think in your life. I want to look, I came into business. I want to make a shitload of money because I want to have great life. I want freedom. I want choices. I want options. I want to, I want to, you know, have my fuck you money. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it, I, I can do whatever I want to do, wherever I want to go. And that's what I built. And I want to, I want to teach people like you how to do that. I want to teach you how to do that stuff. And so I know I can. And uh, so reach out to me. If you, any of you guys have questions about me, what I'm doing, how I'm doing it, whatever, man, send me a message. I'm pretty cool and, and grounded and, you know, <laughs> I'm not full of myself yet. Okay. So I just, I want to, I, I want to help you. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much. So, Leader Shifters, you know how to reach me, Shaney at theleadershiftproject.com and all of our social media as well. It's been awesome having Daniel Alonzo on the show today, a true leader shifter who has taken that bullshit, re bullshit rhetoric and turned it into real results for himself and wanting to now do that with other people going forward. Thank you for joining us this week. We will see you next week with another edition of The Leadership Show. Mwah!